Yes, hello and welcome to Footy Talk for your Thursday, the last day of winter as well. How good is this? And an absolute delight. When it is spring, of course, the young pups start to rise and here is a young star on the rise all the way from Brisbane down in Melbourne today in studio, Will Ashcroft. Will, welcome. Thanks for having me, Daisy. No dramas whatsoever, pal. I appreciate you coming in. Um, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the present or should we go down memory lane a little bit to your under-18s and maybe even a touch younger and figure out why you were a cat supporter? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, yeah, I've, I've been a cat supporter all my life, obviously not anymore. Um, loving my time at the Lions in my first season, but um, yeah, Chris Scott, who was um, dad's, obviously played with dad at, at the Lions, um, Nigel Lappin, another one. They, yeah, dad, dad had obviously finished playing when I was born and um, they were starting their journey at the Cats as, as coaches. Um, and I just loved how Joel Sell went about it and and, he, and Nigel sent me a, a Joel Selwood jersey and that was sort of it and um, loved them ever since. Was he your hero growing up? Yeah, he was, yeah. Uh, I think what uh, I loved about him was how he inspired his teammates, obviously the captain of the club, um, a real on-field leader and, and something I s- sort of tried to pride myself on um, in, in my junior pathway, trying to lead by example like he did. So um, yeah, he was definitely an inspiration of mine. The junior pathway I'm really interested in because not only were you much talked about throughout this, but there was the side that you played with and we were just talking about it then. Who were some of the names that were in that side at the Sandy Dragons? Yeah, we had a fair few drafted last year, which was exciting for uh, obviously every in- individual, but the, the club itself, um, yeah, played alongside She, who obviously had a great night last night and um, yeah, really proud of what he was able to do this year. Were you slightly pissed off? Because you were the favourite <laughs> a long way out and he obviously had a great season. Was there a little bit of, hey, you got lucky? No, I was, I was hoping for a tie, to be honest. It would have been, oh, been fun, but yeah. um, no, nah, I think he, he deserved it. Obviously missed a, a couple of games or five, five or six games towards the end of the year and um, he was he was able to yeah play some really good footy and um, so it was, an, it was he was probably the deserving uh, winner in the end, um, which was awesome for him. But yeah, we had a, a number of others, um, Charlie Clark, who was sort of the live wire uh, up forward for us yep. and kicked kicked a bag a bag pretty much every week. Um, and then we got some other guys who were, were sort of bottom ages last year and up and up and comers this year. Riley Sanders, who's who's highly touted this year. Um, Will Brown and and I was playing my brother as well, Levi. Yeah, who's um, still a year away. So yeah, we had a fair few in there. So you and Shees were in the midfield. That's how it was. Just roll up thirty five each week, and then you went on and won it. Yeah, he was sort of playing more forward, but, but right. he, he did roll up and play a bit of midfield as well. It's, it's funny how he played back this year because um, he was yeah he was a genuine forward and, and, and midfielder last year. So yeah, we, we sort of waxing together um, a fair bit last year. The and this really fascinated me with social media and everything this day. I. And we were all across your journey from a, a very young age, not just that all the talk through papers and any other media was a lot about you. How did you find that? Was it, you know, and handling, I guess, the expectation and pressure that was coming from pretty much round one of the season before you got drafted? Yeah, I've always thought for me, I just do everything in my power and, and sort of block out the noise a little bit and um, just focus on the things I can control. I've been pretty big on that. Um, I like to utilize social media and um, I use it pretty regularly, but I think yeah, when when I, when I break it down, I'm always coming back to what I can do to to improve and and develop and be the best version of myself as a player and as a person. Um, so that, that's always been my focus from the very the very start. And and I knew that last year I was under a bit of pressure. And but if I if I stuck truly to that, um, I yeah I had the best year I could possible leading into the AFL. And now, you know, it's only going to ramp up um, coming back next year and um, hopefully I'll have a, a really long career and it'll only be. Um, there, there for the whole thing. So I think, yeah, if I stick true to those those core values that I've instilled in myself, then um, hopefully I'll do okay. We've seen it a little bit this year with Harley Reid coming through, and a similar sort of thing. Is there one bit of advice you'd give him from your point of view? Yeah, just just that. Just just stick true to yourself. Don't get too caught up in all those things. They don't they don't matter as much. I think it's it's more hype and and, and media attention that um, yeah that that world's very separate to the world of actually playing and performing um, in an elite sport. So. Yeah, working as hard as you can, still finding the balance to, to enjoy it at the same time and, and do things outside of footy. But yeah, um, trying to do everything you can to, to be the best player and person you can. You were good enough to play in the first round of the season against Port Adelaide. Was that your boyhood dream? Yeah, it was unfortunate. We sort of didn't have a great day as a team and um, probably didn't uh, dream of it sort of being 
or going that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was still, still awesome to, to live out the dream that I always wanted to, to play AFL and then to do it in round one was, was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, loved love running out alongside all my brothers at the Lions, and um, yeah, even though I didn't go that, the way we wanted, we, we bounced back the week after and um, put together a pretty good year. What were the emotions like when you actually knew you were running out onto the ground for your first AFL game? You ticked that box of, as a young kid, there's the dream, and I'm about to do it. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I think the the thing that um, mum and my family have always tried to to tell me is to to not let the moments just just bypass you and sort of just roll through it. Um, I think that was still an incredible achievement, even though it didn't go how I wanted and, and the team wanted. I think it was still important to to sit, sit back and reflect on how far I'd come and um, making your AFL debut was a huge achievement. I obviously had my eyes on on bigger and better things, but yeah, I think it's still important to to check the box and, and really enjoy the moment for what it is and um, then move to the next thing. I'm sure everybody who's listening along is really interested in how you've prepared yourself to come in and have an impact at AFL level straight away feels like 10 years ago and, and further back to when I started, there was almost an expectation that you'd come in and if you were good enough, you'd play a couple of games and you went back to the twos for a month and then you came in and out. But we've seen sort of with Sam Walsh, Nick Dacos, Matt Rowell, you guys come into the system, one, already built big enough to play, but also with a mindset that you're going to come in and not just participate, but you're going to be one of the better players from the outset. Yeah, well, that's always been my mindset. Just um, the thing that I probably think about the most is I just demand more for myself than, than people can probably think. Um, and that's always been yeah my mindset from the get go. When I was really young, I always wanted to, to play AFL and play AFL well. So yeah, that's always been sort of in the back of my mind or well, actually the, the forefront of my mind to, to make sure I'm doing everything I can day to day. And, and especially now sort of going through that rehab process with my knee, uh, it's been really challenging, but now I've sort of shifted my mindset to how can I get the most out of every day? Um, and sometimes that's going to look different. Like it's not, not always training the absolute house down and, um, and smashing yourself, especially in this position I am in now. I've got to be pretty careful and um, pr- pretty smart in how I go about my rehab so I'm not swelling swelling up the knee too much. I'm, I'm working towards what I, what I need to to get back playing. So, yeah, how can I get the most out of every day and, um, and yeah, progress forward? What does that look like? Are you a goal setter? Do you write it down? Do you have a diary that you tick things off or is it more just you knowing within yourself when you put the head on the pillow at night, you've done everything you can? Yeah, it's sort of shifted across the time. I used to have a, a diary I'd, I'd write in um, what I did every single day and, and track track all my progress. But now I've sort of shifted into a bit more of an efficient way of sort of writing some things down I want to achieve every day and ticking them off. And um, that's not just coming in the form of football. I've got some business interests Um and especially now I'm sort of, I won't be playing for a little bit. So trying to find some different avenues where I can, um, yeah, progress, progress in my life, I guess, and, and enjoy those things. So yeah, every day I'm sort of writing a list down and, um, trying to tick them off and, and make sure I get them all done by the end of the day. So I can you know I've had a pretty effective day and can move forward. Football, as we know, can be one of the great levelers in not only life, but in anything you do, your season was going as good as it probably could have. Did you win or have you been given the car for goal of the year or does that come on Brownlow night? <laughs> oh, that's Brownlow night. That's Brownlow think, night. Yeah. We need to touch on that on a minute. But the knee injury, and I think, you know, as a footballing fan and as the footballing public, we'd loved watching you go about it and we were all like, shit, please don't let this be the worst case scenario, which it's ended up being. How has that been for you? Yeah, to be honest, um, uh, I've, I've been struggling, to be honest, a little bit. Um, I think, yeah, I was... Yeah, I was loving every every moment of, of being an AFL footballer and I think just the week to week, the day to day things I love the most and that's sort of um that's probably affected me a little bit as well, that sort of being away from the club, um, being being back here in Melbourne's been great with family and, and seeing other friends, but uh, I just love that day to day grind of, of going into the club and, and getting better and, and improving alongside my teammates and um so yeah, I've been I've, it was obviously always gonna be tough and there's no real nothing you can really say to to make it uh, better in that initial period, but now I'm sort of four weeks down the track from the surgery, and um, as tough as it tough as it is, I'm trying to shift my mindset to to make sure I come back uh, in better physical shape, but also you know mentally stronger and, and and more resilient. Have you been able to lean on anyone around the club, coaches, other teammates who've been in similar spots? Yeah, the, the club's been awesome to be honest. They've um, really supported me as best they can. Danny Daly, who, who's the GM, um, he's been you know checking in with me all the time. Obviously, the club's in a, in a great spot now to, to go on and play finals and, and hopefully make a deep run. So, you know, everyone's focus is there, but still still making the time um, for me to try and support me through 
um, what's been a pretty challenging period. So yeah, he's been awesome from a coaching perspective. And then um, the leaders at the club, are, I'm really, really, really close with them as well. Lockie and, and Harris, just to name a couple, they've been um, awesome support, especially when they, they, they've been playing in Melbourne a little bit, sort of catching up with them and trying to navigate my way through. I'm tipping you're not going to be a great watcher of the game <laughs> in terms of sitting in the stands. It's going to be hard for you to not be out there, obviously, but some people go, okay, they can sit there and watch the game and not get too rolled up. I just, from the, the words you're saying, I think it's going to be a bit tougher maybe for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's probably been one of the toughest things. I yeah. think, um, the first game, I think they might've been playing free over in, in Perth. The first game I was out and I was, yeah, it was a bit of a weird feeling to be honest, sitting there on the couch, um, watching the boys run out and play. It was, yeah, it was pretty challenging. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not someone to, to wish upon them not playing well in, in the finals and, and not winning. I, I, I love nothing more. I love I love all those guys. So, um, yeah, as much as it's going to be tough to, to watch, um, yeah, I, I still hope they do really well. Have you um, had a mentor in terms of player or coach that you've been under the wing of? Yeah, Cam Bruce, who, who's the midfield coach. Yeah. Um, he's he's been incredible, to be honest. Um, I knew him a little bit last year. I did a, a fair chunk of the preseason with the club last year and sort of started building that relationship with him. Um, and, yeah, we, we meet really often and, and talk um, obviously about footy and he's progressed my um, my footy attributes a lot this year and, and just understanding the game and uh, what to value as, as a midfielder in a, in a really strong side who, who's trying to challenge. So um, yeah, he's been instrumental in my development so far and um, yeah, looking forward to working with him a lot more through this preseason and into next year. If you do go back through the Google, have a look at Cam Bruce with blonde tipped hair. Hide him a little bit at the blues and he doesn't really like the fact that that's still there now that he's got no hair on his dome. Hey, mate, really hot start by you. We will come back after this. We'll talk about that goal of the year. We'll also talk about the mane that you've got up top because he's some of the most luscious hair you're ever likely to see. Plus the All-Australian team, what comes for the Lions? This is the Footy Talk podcast, your daily dose of footy, the latest news, interviews and analysis from the world of AFL. This is the Footy Talk podcast. If you're listening on Spotify, hit the bell. In studio, as you would know, if you continue listening, is the young star from the Lions, Will Ashcroft. We've touched on some of the tougher topics in terms of the ACL and, and the setback, but what about the highlight you provided early on left forward pocket? I don't need to tell you. Tell us what was going through your head. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. It will be goal of the year. Tell us what happened. Yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest. I think um, I had a bit of a quieter first quarter. I was yeah, against Frio um, and you know, just my mindset going into the second was to try get involved and um, start at start in the midfield and just yeah wanted to work as hard as I could to, to try and get involved early and then yeah sort of um, stoppage in in our front fifty and yeah not sure the ball sort of just bounced up and um, I actually saw a highlight last night at, at the awards and I didn't realise how far sort of behind my head it was <laughs> grabbing it um, so yeah sort of just um, yeah leapt up for it and probably didn't have time to to come to the ground and have a shot because there was sort of everyone around well defenders around me and sort of. Yeah, just threw it on the boot and, and luckily it sort of floated through. Have you ever practiced anything like that? Are you one of the guys pre-training and post-training, you're kicking inside out torps and bananas and all those sorts of things from the pocket? No, nah, nothing like that really. I think probably a couple of times maybe in my in my junior career, I, you know, from stoppage, maybe yeah. getting getting it off the, maybe if you're getting tagged or something, you sort of go up and get it and quick kick forward out of the air, but never, never at goal. So um, yeah, I'm sort of just an, inst- an instinct play and um, luckily it came off. It is one of the better goals we are ever likely to see in the AFL. And if you don't get uh, the goal of the year on Brownlow night, I'll be there. I'll run up. I'll do a full <laughs> Kanye on Taylor Swift for you. And I'll give you that award. <laughs> what about your locks? Now I, I love this. As someone who came into the game with big hair, my hair was nowhere near as nice as you. I had shitty dreadlocks. I was a <laughs> bum from Druin. The lion seems like it actually suits you in terms of where you've landed because you've got the mane, like the big lion. Yeah, I don't know. I've, <laughs> last year, it, I definitely didn't have it this long. Um, yeah. And then the year before that, I was at school, so mum didn't let me. She had, she had me cut it off every <laughs> every second week. So I had a bit more freedom living away from home and um, just, yeah, let it let it grow, grow out a bit, I guess. And yeah, sort of just ran with it, I think. Um, yeah, I, I'm not, 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 so, not too sure where it sort of originated from, but yeah, it sort of suits the the lion theme. So I'll, I'll keep running with it. Is there a regime? Is, you know, are you a twice a day washer or are you just, it's just lucky to have it looking so fabulous? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, nah, nothing, nothing too, nothing too crazy. I'm yeah. Just do the, the, the usual stuff, maybe a couple of times a week. Um, give it a wash, put, put gel in it when, when I need to. And, um, yeah, sort of just sits there. What about some of the other blokes you're living with? A couple of 
other father, one other father son in Jasper Fletcher. You're living with him plus a guy called Shadow Bray. One yeah. of the sickest names you're likely to hear. <laughs> How's that going for you all? Yeah, loving it. Yeah, it's it's been um, been really good. I've I've been away a little bit, um, getting getting the surgery done. Is that um, with a host family, or you boys are just? No, nah, just us two. Wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, we've we've loved. I didn't. I knew Jasper a little bit um, through the junior pathway. Played a bit of footy with him uh, under twelves Queensland when I was living back on the Gold Coast, and then played against him a little bit last year and and years prior. And um, yeah, yeah, Shadow's Shadow's been good as well. He's um, enjoying his footy. Playing, playing some BFL and, and trying to work his way up and, and develop. So, yeah, it's, it's been good to sort of lean on them. And I reckon the best thing about it is we don't we don't talk much footy at home. We keep it keep it pretty balanced and um, it's just trying to enjoy our time as, as young men. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's been really good for all of us. Usually if there is a house of three of you, there's a good cl- a good cook, a bloke who can't cook, and someone who's either really clean or really messy. Yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah. Jasper prides himself on his, his cooking. So. Is he good or does he? Yeah, he's pretty yeah, good. He's pretty good. Yeah, okay, he's so pretty Jasper's good. the cook. Yeah, and I'm, I'm the clean freak. So, so, you're, so that leaves uh, Shadow mm-hmm. as the shit cook and the messy guy. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll say that. <laughs> Which we love. Are you playing PlayStation? Are you all gamers? Are you into that sort of stuff? Yeah, we are. Yeah, we, we had a little period where we were back on Fortnite a little yeah. bit. So we, um, we actually brought all our TVs out into the living room and um, had a three person set up out there. So, uh, that sort of died off pretty quickly, but yeah, we, we still play a little bit of 2k golf and, and FIFA and things like that. You touched before that you are doing a few things outside of footy. You've got the app, which is wash. Yeah. Wash. Yeah. Is that the W from Will into yeah. the first part of Ashcroft? Yeah, w Ashcroft. Yep. So yeah, we, we just launched a sort of an all in one performance and wellbeing app. Um, I think where it originated from, I've sort of had this idea for a number of years now was I think young kids who are coming up, um, through the pathway, not just in football, but just in sport in general, probably didn't have the access to the the tools and the resources and knowledge to actually um, get there. I think a lot of kids are motivated and uh, really want to achieve high level things, but um, never had the yeah the resources and things like that to to achieve it. So yeah, that's where where we sort of have come in and tried to yeah launch this app that that gives kids the opportunity to learn and and grow and develop. Um, and, and get to the highest level of sporting achievement they want to. Where can we get that? Is that on the App Store? Yeah, so through all, all, the, all our socials, so through my Instagram and um, Wash's Instagram as well, and then, yeah, I, I sort of sign up through the App Store and, and go from there. Anything else outside of footy that you want to pursue or in terms of study or any other business ventures? Yeah, I've, I've been doing uh, – last year I was, I was out of school before I got drafted, so um, I was doing uh, business and sports management at, at Deakin University here in Melbourne, so um, – put that on hold a little bit for, for now, but uh, definitely something I'm interested in doing. I'm, I'm pretty big on the study side of things and probably driven uh, by mum's beliefs. So I'll probably have to keep that going at some point, but yeah, no, I, absolutely. Um, we'll, we'll continue that. Your old man, we've, you've spoken about your mum a little bit. The old man obviously was a, a great of the lions and the bears. How does he go in, I guess, giving you advice or watching on? Yeah, I think, um, I've said this a few times this year, but he, I think he's found um, a good balance between just give, just supporting me uh, as a human um, and and sort of leaving the footy stuff to the other guys. I think I'm in a really good position, as I touched on before, with Brucey and, and obviously Fags and uh, a number of different coaches and players at the club. Um, they've, they sort of take care of my footy stuff and, and I'm pretty driven and, and motivated to get better as a footballer. So yeah, he's just been really good support, support network and just a good father figure, I guess, for me. Um, but I also still lean on him. We still chat a lot of footy and um, he, he helps me a lot still develop as a footballer as well. Did he ever pull out the VHS? I don't think he would have been on DVD by the time he'd finished his career. Has he ever got the highlights out for you? And are there any as good as what you've created in 16 odd games? Yeah, I've um, I've actually yeah, I've watched a fair few of his highlights. Yeah, it was too long ago for, for YouTube and, <laughs> and stuff like that. So I've watched on KO, there's, there's a few different games on there that they've, they've sort of pulled out. So um, Levi, my brother and I have watched, watched all of them. Um, but yeah, no, nah, he was, uh, he obviously played a lot of games and, um, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to be half the player he was. I think you're well and truly on track for that. Hey, so let's talk about the Lions. Really good season, finished off strong, got the second spot. It seems like it's set up perfectly for a serious tilt throughout September. Yeah, absolutely. We've, uh, we've been working, uh, very hard this year and I think, um, yeah, it shows the, the testament of the team, me, me coming out of the side. I think there's been, uh, you know, guys who have been injured throughout the year. And I think the ability for for a, a midfield group, especially to 
sort of cover cover that and, and, and still play the, the, the brand of footy we want to play. Um, it's a testament to the team and the depth we have. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to, to watching that first final especially. And, um, yeah, yeah it'll, be, it'll be interesting. How does Fags go in motivating groups? Uh, I hear a little bit about Craig McRae. He's got the ability to be funny or serious. Other coaches, fire and brimstone sort of stuff. Where does Fags sit within that? Yeah, Fags has been unreal for, for me, especially for, from my personal experience. I've, I've loved um, working working with him. I think, yeah, he's found a really good balance. Like at, at every captain's run this year, he sort of pulls out a different joke, maybe tells one or gets one on the big screen. So, um, Is he funny? Because like a lot of coaches think they're funny and they get the laughs because no one wants to be sacked. But is he actually funny? Well, everyone, we, we put our thumb thumb up or down for him at the end. And, um, I think everyone's too scared, to be honest. So everyone puts their thumb up. But no, nah, he's, he's a funny man. But yeah, I think, yeah, he's, he's found a really good balance between but, um, sort of, you know, motivating it and being tough on guys and, and still trying to get the best out of everyone. So yeah, I've, I've loved working with Fags this year. You'll be watching on, of course. Who's someone that you think can really light it up come September? Not one of the probably household names, but someone who's been having a, a steady year. Charlie Cameron, of course, has been on fire, but we don't want the big names. So it's just a little bit of a wild card for us. Uh, it's a good one. Um, I'll be biased and say Fletcher. I think he's been he's been building pretty nicely. He's been playing a very selfless role for the team. Um, but I think he's he's got that X factor, X factor ability. Like his first game when we when we played the Swans, he sort of kicked that unbelievable goal, Mark, a um, couple of bounces and then slotted it. So I think he can, um, yeah, especially playing playing at the Gabber in the first game. I think yeah, he's got a great ability to break the game open a bit and be that X factor player and have a, a couple of big plays to inspire the team. We love that. What about yourself? You'll be back when for next year? Yeah, it's a bit up in the air. I think it's important to probably uh, not put a date on it specifically and just and just work um, week to week to, to try to uh, achieve and, and get back eventually. But yeah, it's somewhere probably between around the 10 month mark. So yeah, seven, eight, nine, ten potentially around next year. And it's all progressing nicely. We did talk about it briefly before in terms of your feelings, but how is the progress going with the knee? Yeah, really good. I saw the surgeon yesterday. Um, so yeah, he's really happy with my progress so far and um, yeah, working really closely with the Lions physios and, and performance staff and um, they're happy with my progress so far. So yeah, progressing every week and um, just working towards sort of running now or first of all, getting the range back and, and building the strength and then into running and see how we go from there. Mate, we wish you all the very best with that from not only us here at the Footy Talk podcast, but I think from the AFL world, we can't wait to see you back out there doing your thing because we've had a little taste of it and what we've been able to taste has been absolutely sublime. So thanks very much for coming in and all the best. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's been Will Ashcroft. This has been the Footy Talk podcast. Tomorrow, Joey Montagna and Kate McCarthy with Maddie Presparkas from the Bombers. This has been the Footy Talk podcast.